So in the last lecture, we have seen what the structural isomers were, right? So we'll quickly do this and we'll come to uh, stereoisomers. So can you tell me what these two, how these two are related to each other? The first question, these two. So they are positional isomers. These are positional isomers of each other, okay? What about these two? Chain isomers. These are chain isomers. Why these are chain isomers? Because the longest chain is different. The parent chain is different, okay? Now, this is the substituent here, this methyl. Here the substituent is ethyl, okay? Now it is clear that the chain on the molecule above is one carbon longer than the chain on the molecule below. Can you see that? Yes, yeah, sir. So I'm not counting because I don't want to find the name of this. So I'll just understand that because the parent chain itself is different, these are chain isomers. What about these two? So well, I'll separate. Well, well, yeah, yeah. I'll separate the substituents. So this is a substituent. These two are substituents. I'm uh, putting them in a different color just for understanding. And the parent chain is the yellow colored chain. Okay. Now. Is this not like summer? These uh, two have same parent chains and the substituents are also different, uh, same. Substituents are also same. It is dimethyl, dimethyl, okay? Uh, the first one will be two comma two dimethyl. The second one will be two comma three dimethyl. So only the locants are changing. The parent chain is same, the substituents are same. That's why these are positional, positional isomers. These are positional isomers of each other. What about these two? Chain isomers, sir. These two are chain isomers. The reason these are chain isomers. Substituents is, are different. Uh, the substituents are different. The parent chain is same, but the substituents are changing. Here, uh, there are two methyl groups, which are substituents. And in the second case, there is only one ethyl group. Even though the parent chain is same, if the substituents are different, then they are supposed to be chain isomers. Of chain isomers. What yes. about these two? Positional uh, isomers. Isomer. These are positional because only the locant is changing. This is uh, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, none and all. This is three none and all. Okay, what about these two? Positional isomer. These are again positional. What about these two? Positional. Chain isomers. These are chain isomers. Okay, be careful. Because the chain starts in carbonyl carbon in aldehyde. Okay? Yes, sir. So one is a longer chain and one is a shorter chain. Now, if you see carefully, this thing is the substituent here. I'll put in a different color, okay? I'll put in different pink color. Okay, this is the substituent here. Okay. Here, this is the substituent. So you can clearly see that uh, the main chain on the upper molecule is longer than the main chain, the parent chain in the uh, molecule below. Okay. So obviously, different number of carbons in the parent chain. That's why they are supposed to be chain, chain isomers. isomers. Chain isomers. What about these two? Chain isomers. Chain isomers. Okay. These two are also chain isomers because just like aldehyde, acid is also supposed to start at carbonyl carbon. That is this uh, COH, the carbon uh, which is written as COOH, that is carbonyl carbon. So obviously the substituents here are one is methyl and one is ethyl. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So these are chain isomers. 
what about these two these are also chain isomers chain isomers these are also chain isomers because even nitrile uh, is a compound Start from the first carbon yeah whose first carbon is uh, this uh, triple bonded carbon to nitrogen okay so these are chain isomers what about these these are all isomers chain isomers only chain isomers chain isomers but they are also called ring isomers ring isomers what about these two functional isomers positional isomers so these are functional isomers. why because Positional one, both sir uh, yeah these are actually functional isomers because uh, one functional group is different so alkene and alkyne are supposed to be different functional groups so the one on the above is a diene and one on the below is a alkyne so because they are different functional groups they are functional isomers of each other what about these two are these two isomers in the first place check no sir no sir they are not isomers count the number of carbons 1 2 6 yes sir they are isomers 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 number of carbons are same degree of unsaturation is one here because there is one ring here there is pi bond so degree of unsaturation is one so both have general formula of what c 6 h 1 18 uh, sorry 18. h 12 h 12 h 12 okay so sir, functional isomers these are functional isomers clear yes sir because one is an alkene even though it is cyclic alkene it is still an alkene and one is alkene what about these three functional isomers these are i first check whether they are isomers or not one carbon two carbon three carbon One carbon, two carbon, three carbon. One carbon, two carbon, three carbon. All has, all have three carbons. Three. So obviously, yes, these are I isomers. See. So primary amine, secondary amine, and tertiary amine are. Tertiary amine. Functional isomers. Functional isomers. These are functional isomers. What about these two? Functional isomers. These are also functional, sir. Alcohols and ethers. these are esters and acids yes sir functional what about these two what are these these are not isomers check yes sir these are not isomers these are not so isomers sir these are isomers see one carbon two one, carbon three two, carbon four three, carbon four. One, two, one, two, three, four. Four. yeah isomers functional isomers This is ketone and this is aldehyde. Functional isomer. So sometimes, if you just look at, you know, glance at the molecule, it will appear as if the number of carbons are not equal. Why? Because here hydrogen is being mentioned. Okay, here also we'll have an hydrogen. That's why this chain is appearing longer. But actually, it is same as this chain. So we have to carefully count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and uh, decide whether they are isomers or not. What about these two? Functional isomers. Functional isomers. Can you name the functional groups here? One is iron and other. One is cyanide. Okay. One is nitrile actually. The one is, is nitrile. nitrile. the other is isonitrile okay so okay, i read that this is nitrile nitrile ends with cn isonitrile ends with nc what about these two sir there are not isomers sir just check carefully one carbon they are functional isomers sir they are functional isomers 
one, two, three, four. So number of carbons are same. There is one nitrogen here. There is one nitrogen here. There is one oxygen here. There is one oxygen here. Okay. Degree of unsaturation is one. Degree of unsaturation is one. So obviously, automatically, number of hydrogens will also be equal. So this is an amide. Yes, sir. This is an acid with an amine group attached as a substituent. So these are functional isomers. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. What about these two? Positional isomers. No. Positional isomers, sir. No. Sir, so chain parent chain is different. No. Just count the number of carbons. One, two, three, four, sir, five, six. So parent chain is this because these are ketones. Positional isomers. No. Metamers. These are metamers. So, whenever you have ketone or ester or ether, two ketones, two esters or two ethers, in which the carbon that is cutting the chain into two parts, okay, this part and this part, this is cutting the chain into two parts, this part and this part. They are supposed to be metamers. Okay. These are also metamers. Why? Count the number of carbons. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So these two are esters. So these two are also metamers. Clear? Yeah. These two are also metamers. 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 These two are also metamers, secondary amines. These are just yes, like, sir. you know, these are just like ethers only, but instead of oxygen, you have nitrogen. Clear? Yes, sir. These two are also metamers. Yes, sir. You know, this is a tertiary amine. Both are tertiary amines. And uh, the tertiary amine is sitting between this chain and cutting the chain into two parts. And if you count the number of carbons, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And sixth carbon here, sixth carbon here. So anyway, equal number of carbon. That's why they are isomers. That's why, uh, you know, if you uh, classify the, uh, which kind of structural isomerism it is, it will be a metamer, okay? What about these two? These three. Sir. Uh, functional isomers. Sir, how to identify metamers? But in metamer, there will be a functional group that will sit in between the chain. In between the chain, it will cut the chain like this, okay? It will cut the chain into two parts. This is sitting in between the chain. This is sitting in between the chain. Here, this is sitting in between the chain. Here, this group is sitting in between the chain, okay? Here, yes, this sir. Whereas in positional, if you see, which page is this? Wait. Page number seven. If you look at positional isomers, it, this thing will not sit in between the chain. It will be attached to the chain. Okay. There is no carbonyl carbon here. A normal sp3 this carbon. Branch. See here again. This OH is attached to the chain. It, it is not sitting in between the chain. There is no uh, different uh, uh, carbon here. This is normal sp3 carbon only. Okay. Whereas yes, sir. If, you see, if you see here, this is a this is not an sp3 carbon. This is not an sp3 carbon. This is a carbonyl carbon. So it is dividing the uh, chain of sp3 carbons in two parts. Okay. Here it is dividing the chain of sp3 carbons into two parts. So here one, two, three on one side, one, two on one side. Here one, two, three, four on one side and one on one side. Clear? Here one, two and one, two on one side, one, two, three and one on one side. Okay? Here one, two, yes, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. Actually, these two are identical. I made a mistake. Clear? Yes, sir. These two are. 
identical. So we have to be careful that's why. Because both are same, right? So they are not isomers of each other. They are not metamers of each other. They are just same. Down also same. Which one? And H1. one. Okay, one thing I'll do, I'll change it. So what I'll do is, what to do, tell me. Add one more carbon here. Add one more carbon here. Add one more carbon here. Okay. So now these are metamers, right? Yes, sir. Check. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Here also I must change. I'll add one carbon here. I'll add one carbon here. Okay. Now these are metamers, right? In the down one, do you have mistake? Here. This one, right? Yeah, sir. So I'll add one here. And I'll add one here. No clear? Yeah, No sir. correct? Right? Okay. What about this? This? No, yeah, they, they, they are functional isomers, yeah. uh, but uh, they are a special kind of functional isomers. These are tautomers. tautomers. In fact, these are keto enol tautomers. These are keto enol tautomers. Now, this shows tautomerism because the alpha, hyd alpha, alpha hydrogens are available. This alpha hydrogen, one of the alpha hydrogen. I told you in the last class now about tautomers. Whenever you have a yeah. ketone, uh, so you the ketone, the alpha hydrogen will, uh, you know, detach from here. Uh, it will leave the electrons and detach. So these electrons will uh, form a double bond here and this proton will go into water. Okay. Why? Because in water, some base was there. For example, OH minus base is there. That OH minus will offer electrons to this hydrogen and it will leave because this uh, will form a pi bond here and these electrons will come here. Don't worry, I'll tell about that later. So basically, what happens is this hydrogen will detach from here. This uh, electrons will become what? A pi bond. The sigma bond will become pi bond. And this pi bond will become a sigma bond here and it will attach to this hydrogen here. That's why OH is attached here. Clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So can you explain just once more? One second. Suppose you have uh, this double bonded, uh, I'll show you one ketone. Suppose we have a ketone. So here you have oxygen, okay? Now there is a hydrogen attached here, okay? Now what happens is actually, if you take uh, this in a basic medium, uh, there will be a lot of OH minus ions in the basic medium. This OH minus ions will come and offer electrons to this hydrogen, okay? So because this hydrogen got electrons uh, from this uh, OH minus, the OH minus is a base. I'll come to that later when I discuss about acids and bases. A base is basically a proton acceptor. An acid is basically a proton donor. Now it is accepting a proton by offering lone pair. Okay? What will this hydrogen do? Yes, this hydrogen, uh, because, it got, uh, because it got electrons, uh, from this OH minus, it will leave this uh, electrons and come out of the mo molecule. Okay. So basically, what happens? What happens? Tell me. Hydrogen will be removed. It will break its bond. Yeah. Okay. Just let me just write. Okay. So this bond will. Uh, you know, the sigma bond will become a pi bond, okay? 
Now, why this is happening? Now, see, this carbonyl carbon, can you see the uh, carbon to which oxygen is double bonded? It already has four bonds, right? This carbon? Yes. This, this carbon? Yes, sir. This carbon. This carbon already has four bonds. So if one more bond is forming, it cannot form five bonds, right? So what it will do? So this oxygen has already two lone pairs. It will make this, uh, convert this pi bond into what? It will convert this pi bond. Into, no, no, it will convert this pi bond into lone pair. Are you understanding? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So this will become a lone pair. Clear? Like this. So wh yes, what sir. will happen? What will get after this? What will get? Tell me. You'll get an enolate. You'll get an enolate. How will the enolate look? Like this. See. So I'll make this into pi bond. Okay, you are understanding. And this will become a lone pair. Are you understanding? So I'll make this yes, into sir. a different pair. I'll make this orange. So there is orange color. Yeah. So this orange, uh, I'll, I'll mention this lone pair in orange. Okay. And this will get negative charge, this oxygen. Why? Why it will get negative charge? Because here only one electron was with us. Because it has extra electron. Uh, it has one extra electron. Now two electrons are with us. That's why negative charge. Otherwise, you just see the uh, you see the formal charge. For looking at formal charge, you distribute the electrons. Here one electron, two electron, three, four, five, six electrons. Okay. And oxygen is supposed yes. to have that's why it was neutron. Now Count the electrons one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's why seven. negative one. Okay. Now this is called an enolate. This is called yes, sir. Now what was this? Enolate. This was ketone. And what is this? Enolate. Now what will enolate do? Will it sit just like that? It will not sit, right? Uh, and what will happen to this o, o, OH minus? OH minus will become what? Tell me. What will OH minus become after this? You have O, o. H. Okay, this is OH. Now, this bond pair will become lone pair, right? Yes, so sir. This yeah. bond pair will become bond pair, right? And it will attach to hydrogen. Now this will become water. You are understanding? This was hydroxide. And this is water. How did it become water? Accepted it electrons. No, no. It accepted a proton. It accepted a proton. Why? How did it accept the proton? By offering a lone pair. See, it offered a lone pair. So this lone pair will become a bond pair, okay? Now this hydrogen will be neutral, obviously, because it had one electron here. Now also it has one electron. Now this OH minus was negative. Why it was negative? Because it had one, two, three, four, five, six. Here, if I draw this like this. Seven, one extra. Seven electron. electrons. Seven electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons. Here. One, two, three, four, six, five, six electrons. So that's why it is water. Clear? Sure, yeah. Okay. Now this reaction is base catalyzed. This reaction is base catalyzed. Catalyzed means what? What do you mean by catalyzed? Increase the hmm? speed of reaction. Uh, increases speed of reaction, but the catalyst itself doesn't participate in reaction. Okay. That means... This OH minus that was consumed, I should get back, right? 
because it shouldn't participate in reaction. That OH minus is a catalyst. Okay. So overall in the net uh, reaction, it should not be consumed. So what will happen? This enolate, it will offer the lone pair to that proton again. And it, it, it doesn't need to be this uh, water. Some other water molecule also it can be. You are getting my point? Mm -hmm. See, that water molecule will go somewhere. But this reaction is happening in water, so it will take another water molecule. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes. So what will happen? What will happen? Tell me. This will become, so I'll put in red. This will become OH, clear? Plus, yeah. what will it get? OH what minus. Will this will become OH minus. Clear? Yes, sir. So one OH minus consumed ah. and one OH minus regenerate. Clear? Yes, sir. So overall, what happened in this reaction? This ketone converted into enol, converted into enol. Enol. And this is a base catalyzed reaction. This is a base catalyzed reaction. Are you understanding? Yes, sir. And there will be acid catalyzed reaction also, but I'll, I'm, I'm not going into that now. Once we start this resonance and all those things, these reaction mechanisms will be easy for you. That's why I'm not going into that. The only thing you have to remember is uh, for something to show, uh, you know, uh, tautomerism. So the meeting might end. Okay, I'll restart. Uh, so you are understanding. My no, point? sir. It's not. An, it's not an ending notification, sir. It's. It says that we have unlimited time. Okay. Okay. Fine. So, for tautomerism, what do we need? We need a we need alpha hydrogen. We need alpha hydrogen. Clear? Alpha hydrogen. Now, yes, these two are also tautomers. These two are also tautomers. These two are also tautomers. Okay. Clear? Yes, sir. And one more thing you just keep in mind in a basic reaction, okay? You should never get a positive charge in anywhere in between the mechanism. The, the, the thing I wrote is a mechanism here. So you see all, all charges are negative charges. There is no positive charge anywhere. Can you see that? Yes, sir. And in an acid catalyzed reaction, you should never get a negative charge. Negative anywhere. charge. You should always get a positive charge. And uh, I'll, I'll show you later. Uh, how to write mechanisms for reactions. This is just for understanding I have written, but don't worry. After some time, after going through some topics, you'll become expert in these kinds of reactions. Clear? Okay, sir. Okay. Now let us go to next uh, isomerism, which is? Stereoisomerism. Stereoisomerism. In stereoisomerism, so basically, we have seen all these structural isomers. In stereoisomers, there are two big uh, topics. One is geometric isomerism, and the other is optical isomerism. So optical isomerism, I'll deal with that later after dealing with geometric isomerism, okay? Now, before going into isomerism, let us just see how sp3 carbon is. So sp3 carbon has four bonds, and those four bonds are, you know, arranged uh, such that the ends of those uh, four bonds are uh, vertices of a tetrahedron. You know what tetrahedron is? This. Yes, okay. Sir. And the angle between any two bonds attached to carbon will be 109 degrees 28 minutes. Okay. And I'll prove this uh, in some time. Just remember. Clear? So uh, okay. how, many SP3, how many SP3 bonds does a carbon have? four sp3 bonds, okay? Why? Because uh, before hybridization, one s-orbital and three pre-orbitals combine 
to form equal number of hybrid orbitals which are four sp3 orbitals okay so this is one sp3 orbital this is another sp3 orbital this is another sp3 orbital this is another sp3 orbital clear yes sir okay now this is how yes, a tetrahedron looks so this is the tetrahedron these are the vertices of tetrahedron so the atoms or groups of atoms attached to carbon will be on the vertices of tetrahedrons and carbon will sit in the center of tetrahedron clear okay yes sir now how to understand a tetrahedron if you take a cube cube has eight corners right cube has eight corners. eight corners and if you take four of the eight corners such that no two corners have a common edge then those four corners will be the vertices of tetrahedron okay clear see yes sir this is a cube i have taken this corner i left the neighboring corners because they have common edge okay then i yeah, took yes, this i got it i left the neighbor this neighbor and this uh, the other neighbor and i took this i left the neighbor i took this so its neighbors are already left so these corners will be the corners of a tetrahedron do you agree yes sir okay now if i take the four corners of tetrahedron and the center and if the if the side of the cube is a what will be the what will be the position positional vectors of this points what about o what will be the coordinates of o it will be 0 comma 0 comma 0 agree okay following yes sir what about point p yes sir it will be a comma a comma 0 are you understanding because z axis is uh, it is not uh, uh, along z direction and it is you know uh, a in the x direction a in the y direction and zero in the z direction are you understanding yes sir what yeah. about what about this it will be zero comma a comma a agreed a comma yes sir what about this a comma zero comma a, a correct comma a comma and what about the point at the center it will be a by 2 comma a by 2 comma a by 2 do you agree clear why you yes, know sir. because this is 0 comma 0 comma 0 and this corner is a comma a comma a that is the body diagonal and it will be at the center of the body diagonal that's why the the coordinate of the center of this will be a by 2 comma a by 2 comma a by 2 clear yes sir now yes. suppose suppose i i need to find the angle between see so here carbon sits right here one bond here one bond here one bond and here one bond do you agree yes yeah, sir so suppose i want to find the angle between any two bonds what should i do i should find the vector of this i should find the vector of this okay and i have to find the angle between the vectors using you know dot product clear yes yeah, sir A bar dot B bar by magnitude of A bar into magnitude of B bar, B bar is equal to cos theta. I can use this formula. Correct? Yes, sir. No. See, I'll take any two. So this has position vector this, 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 which I already told you. Clear? Yes, sir. Now, what about the vector OS? OS. So OS is what? this is o and this is s uh, so os is this this is os right so os is s minus o okay vector s minus vector o so what will it be a by 2 i cap plus a by 2 j cap plus a by 2 k cap minus 0 i cap 0 j cap 0 k cap so what will you get 
मैग्निट्यूड ऑफ दिस a by two into root three. What is the magnitude of this? A by two into root three. Correct. And in the denominator, it is minus a square by four. So what will you get? A square by four. A square by four will cancel. And what will remain? Minus one by one three. One by one by three. Yes, sir. Minus one by three. Yes, okay. I got it. See, dot product is easy, Amma. Minus a square by four plus a square by four. Minus a square by four. Minus okay. a square by four. Minus a square by four plus a square by four cancel. So what will remain? Minus a square by four. Minus will a remain. square by four. In the numerator, here this one. Yes, sir. Okay. What about denominator? It is the magnitude of first vector, which is a by two into root three, into magnitude of second vector, which is a by two into root three. Correct? Yes, sir. This into this is a square by four. So these two will cancel. Minus one will remain. And root three into root three is three, so how much minus one by three will remain? Clear. So theta is cos inverse of minus one by three. Do you agree? Okay. Yes, sir. So what is cos inverse of minus one by three? Let us see. Cos inverse. So where is cos inverse? Cos inverse of minus one by three. Minus one. Divided by three, one not nine point five. Can you see that? Yes. Sir. Yeah. One one not nine point five. So it is one not nine degrees thirty minutes approximately. Correct. Point five degrees is thirty minutes. Yes. Na? But if you see yeah, precisely, yeah. if you see precisely, it will be twenty eight minutes. So yes, theta sir. is one not nine degrees twenty eight minutes. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay. This was the difficult part. So this angle will be one not nine degrees twenty eight minutes. Any angle, this angle, this angle, any angle will be one not nine degrees twenty eight minutes. Twenty eight minutes. Get. Okay. Okay, sir. What about sp two carbon? Sp two carbon is a trigonal planar structure. Carbon will be at center. One twenty degrees. Three three bonds will be in a plane, and this angle will be one twenty degrees. Uh, and uh, the angle between these two will be. Two forty. If you go from this okay. side, if you go from this side, it will be one twenty. Okay. So yes, maximum sir. angle will be two forty, and minimum angle will be one twenty between any two bonds. Okay. Yes, sir. So basically, these three groups will sit on the corners of a triangle. Equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle. Clear. Okay. Yes, sir. What about SP carbon? It will be linear. An angle between one eighty, one eighty. Clear? Yeah. Okay. And in SP orbital, fifty percent S character, fifty percent P character. In SP two, thirty three percent S character, thirty seven P character. In SP three, twenty five percent S character and seventy five percent P character. Why? Because it is obvious. Yes, okay. sir. Here it is fifty fifty. Here it is one is to two. Here it is one is to three. One is to okay? three. Okay. Yeah. Now that means SP orbital will be little bit shorter. 
Why? Because S character is more. SP two will be longer. SP three will be the longest. Yeah. You know why? The character of P is what? The double shape, right? And character of S is what? Spherical. 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 That's why the SP uh, this will be short and SP three will be long. Are you understanding my point? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So SP will be something like this. SP will be something like this. Okay. What about SP two? Two dumbbells and one large. SP two. SP two. I'm I'm talking about one SP two orbital. I'm talking about. One it will be larger than SP. Longer, not larger. It will be longer. Longer. What about SP three? It will be the longest. Longest. And it will be the thinnest also. And this will be the thickest. Boldest. Okay. So SP will be like this. SP two will be like this. SP three will be like this. And it is very important to remember this because later when you uh, you know. Do the rankings for acid strength and basic strength. This uh, concepts will be useful. Yes. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Now, basically, generally, two sp two orbitals are two sp orbitals are present uh, together. Three sp two orbitals are present together, and uh, four sp three orbitals and are present. Four sp three. Okay. Okay. Now, first we'll okay. go into geometric isomerism. Now. Geometric isomerism in show, is shown in various uh, uh, situations, but the most simplest situation is alkenes in alkenes. Okay, now whenever you have alkenes, see here I have two alkenes. The first condition for something to show geometrical isomerism is the double bonded carbon. So these two are double bonded carbons, right? Yeah. Both the double bonded carbons. Must have two different groups or atoms attached to each. You are getting my point. Yes, sir. That means none of the double bonded carbons can have same groups attached. If it should show geometric isomerism, for example, if you look at this molecule, this carbon has two same groups attached. This carbon has two different yes, groups. Yes, sir. But because one carbon has two same groups attached, this does not show. Geometrical isomerism, correct? Geometric isomerism. Okay. Yeah. No geometric isomerism is possible here. Here also, sir, two methyl groups are attached. Same. So here, no two methyl groups isomerism. are attached. So here, no geometrical isomerism. Okay, is not possible. Clear? Yes. Sir. So. Uh, i have mentioned in red circles uh, the reason why geometrical isomerism is not possible clear if the yes, above sir. condition is not met then the molecule must exhibit geometrical isomerism okay now here okay. if you look at this double bonded carbon two different groups are attached this double bonded carbon two different groups are attached that means this shows geometric isomerism okay Yeah, yeah. Clear? Here also, see. Yes. Two different groups are attached. Here, two different groups are attached. In fact, these two are structurally same. Do you agree? What yes, sir. See, 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 see. The formula is same. That is a that is an old story. We we have seen that. But structurally also they are same. What do you mean by structurally same? This carbon. Has one H group and one CH three group attached. This carbon has one CH three group and one H group attached. Clear? Mm -hmm. This carbon has one CH three group and one H group attached. This carbon has one CH three group and one H group attached. Are you following? One H group attached. Okay. Now the problem yeah, is, see, even though the connections are same, the orientations of the molecules are different. What do you mean by orientations are different? Here CH three are facing in the opposite one. directions. Here CH three are on you know the same side of this uh, double bonded. Same direction. Uh, yeah. Now the problem is see this is a sigma bond and one another is a pi bond right? 
so how is a sigma bond sigma bond is present between carbons and pi bond is present in the form of a banana at the top and banana at the bottom clear these are pi electron clouds you have seen in chemical bonding clear are you understanding yes yes sir suppose we have two carbons and let's take this so suppose these two carbons are there what do you mean by this this is actually like this so this is actually like this the sigma bond is present in between okay so i'm drawing the sigma bond and pi bond is something like this there is a electron cloud above like this and there is an electron cloud below this is one and this is another now suppose if you try to rotate this uh, carbon carbon bond it cannot rotate because in order to rotate this uh, two bridges must break clear that means this molecule is locked in this orientation you are getting my point yes sir no sir, so there is only one pi bond while trying to no no one pi bond is one above and one below two pi bonds are there then one will be at front and one will be at back also for example if you have triple bond two pi bonds are present right okay so see this is one only this is only one pi bond if triple bond is there one will be at front and one will be at back you are getting my point yes yeah, sir i'll show you don't worry so i'll show you now let me show you one thing if you have a single bond let me just right if you have a single bond like this uh, what is this molecule tell me ethane molecule ethane molecule right now if you look at this molecule in 3d it will be like this can you see yes this sir yeah these two are carbons uh, gray colored and white colored are hydrogens and there is a bond between uh, two carbons can you see and yes, that bond can be rotated that bond can be rotated because it is a single bond that means uh, you are getting my point yes uh, sir the, yeah got it uh, this this hydrogens now they are in the staggered position they can come in eclipse position also huh okay in skew position also yeah so yeah. They, they they can rotate okay but if you have a double bond if you have a double, double bond, bond for example okay let me just uh, take this i'll put a double bond in between so this is your uh, what what molecule is this they can't rotate sir huh they can't so, rotate if double bond is there they can't rotate i'll show you why i hope uh, it will show you so see how can they rotate tell me can they rotate yes they not if 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 you rotate them what will happen that will break now oh. if single bond is there you can rotate if uh, yeah. you, you imagine a 3d model made of plastic if you try to rotate this it should break right and one more thing everything is in plane see in one plane here see yes sir because it is trigonal planar okay sp2 carbon right yeah yeah what and actually how these are present is one electron cloud is above and one electron cloud is below okay okay anyway triple bond also cannot rotate but triple bond there is no use now so anyway You we'll see, so this is acetylene, right? Yeah, ethane. 
So if you look at this, uh, the, uh, the 3D structure of this, it will be like this. This also cannot rotate, see. And it is linear, can you see? Yes, sir, only in one plane. Only, only in, on one line actually. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Clear? So even this yes, triple pod also cannot rotate. Okay? okay yeah. Fine. So anyway, this cannot rotate. That's why these two will be always opposite. Here, these two will be all, all, always on the same side. Okay? So these two are, see, co connections are same, but orientations are different. Orientations are different. So these are not structural isomers of each other because they are structurally identical. But orientations are different. That's why they are geometrical isomers. Clear? Yes, sir. What about these two? Which two, sir? These two. They are geometrical isomers. They are also geometrical isomers only. Okay? Chlorine, chlorine. Okay? CH3, yes, CH3. This is same. But on this side, we have same groups attached, but on the opposite sides. On the opposite side. Opposite so these side. two geometrical isomers of each other. What about these two? They two are geometrical structures. They two are geometrical because this is same. This is just opposite. Clear. So these two are also geometrical isomers of each other. Clear? Yes, sir. Now, does this show geometrical isomerism? They are not isomers, actually. Yes, no, sir. No, no, no. They can't can show. show. Can this show geometrical isomers? My question is, can this have a, can this have no, a geometrical no. isomer? No, sir. No, cannot sir. Have, cannot have. Can no, this have a geometrical isomer? No. Okay. Can this have no, a geometrical no. isomer? No, sir. No. 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 Can this have a geometrical isomer? No, no, again. No. Why? Because you check only one thing. If any carbon has two same groups, no. Two yes, same sir. groups, no. Two no. same groups, no. Two same groups, no. Simple. No. Okay. Okay, fine. What about these two? So they can first, show. Let, first, let us divide these into... Uh, first, they let us give them names. Yeah, these two are actually geometrical isomers of each other. Okay. Now, when we have geometrical isomers, we can give them a designation. Okay. We can name them either cis or trans. But for naming cis or trans, there is a condition. On the neighboring carbons, there must be at least one same group attached. Okay. On this carbon, there is a CH3 group. On this carbon, there is a CH3 group. On this carbon, there is a hydrogen. On this carbon also, there is a hydrogen. That means we can name them as cis and trans. Clear? Yes, sir. If the same groups on neighboring atoms are on same side, then that is cis isomer. If same groups on neighboring atoms are on opposite side, then it is a trans isomer. Clear? Trans isomer. Yes, sir. Understanding? Sir, at least one should have same or both should have same? At least one. At least one. For example, here. Here, see. Okay, okay. Here, this carbon has hydrogen, this carbon has fluorine. These two are not same. This has hydrogen yes, and this has fluorine. Not same, is. not same. But I'm not worried because at least one is same, na? Yeah, yeah. So yes, this is yeah. this and this is trans. Clear? Trans. Okay. What yes, about sir. these two? First one is trans and second one is cis. Second one is cis. Okay. What about this? Yeah. Trans. Same. Trans and cis. This is trans and this is? This is cis. Cis. Clear. What about this? Yes, sir. Sir, no, no trans and no cis. No trans, no, no cis. cis. But this shows geometrical isomerism. Okay. Why geometrical isomerism? Because this carbon has no same groups attached. This carbon also has no same groups attached. This carbon has no same groups attached. This carbon also has no same groups attached. So these yes, two yeah. 
शो ज्योमेट्रिकल आइसोमेरिज्म बट दे कैन नॉट बी डेजिग्नेटेड एज सीसेंट ट्रांस सीसेंट ट्रांस ओके सो फॉर दीज काइंड्स ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स विल 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 डिजाइन अ डिफरेंट मेथड ऑफ गिविंग देम नेम्स ओके ओके फॉर ज्योमेट्रिक आइसोमेरिज्म टू एग्जिस्ट देयर मस्ट बी नो कॉमन ग्रुप ऑन द सेम कार्बन क्लियर सो हियर आल्सो नो सेम नो कॉमन ग्रुप here also no common group no common group no common group that means these must show geometrical isomerism clear but this yeah. cannot be named cis and trans okay okay clear yes yeah, sir so what to do in these kinds of cases for that we will learn one thing which is called kahn ingold prelog and this is important because the same thing will be used in stereo isomerism the same method will be applied in stereo isomerism so it is a very important topic so kahn ingold prelog so two uh, you know scientist name one is kahn and one is ingold they uh, uh, you know uh, invented this uh, technique of uh, you know dealing with uh, uh, stereo isomerism and geometrical isomerism so in kahn ingold prelog what you get what you do is you give priority to the groups or atoms attached to carbon okay clear yeah now suppose you have an sp3 carbon how many groups are attached 1 2 3 4 so for the four groups you will give ranking and that four groups must be different okay for example and how the ranking is given ranking is based on atomic number ranking is based on atomic number atomic number for example here one hydrogen is attached one chlorine is attached one carbon is attached and one fluorine is attached so the atom or group with the highest atomic number will get the first rank so here chlorine will get first rank then comes fluorine that's why fluorine will get second rank then comes carbon carbon will get third rank then comes hydrogen hydrogen will get fourth rank are you understanding yes sir okay that is carbon methyl group hydrogen sir also present now No, no. First, we should not the, consider them. Ah, uh, first look at the carb uh, atom to which the bond is attached. Okay, okay. If that okay. clashes, na, then go for the next atom. Okay. Okay. For example, on sp two carbon, only two groups are attached, so there will be only two ranks. One is CH three first rank, one is hydrogen second rank. Here, CH three first rank and hydrogen second rank. Clear? Yeah. you don't consider double bonded group okay so forget this so this group for this carbon is ignored so only one group and two group single bonded okay here yes sir this is first rank this is second rank for this carbon for this carbon this is first rank and this is second rank clear yes sir okay now what about this this group one is ch3 group one is coh group one is cho group and one CH two OH group. Now the problem is all are carbons only. Okay, carbon, 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 carbon. So clash, right? Okay. Yeah. Now I must go to the next atom. We should. Ah. Uh -huh. So here this carbon is. We should follow the priority list. Priority. Okay. So next, this carbon is attached to how many oxygens? Two oxygens. actually three oxygens if you go by the rule because the coh group will be like this okay coh group is this right so it is attached to one oxygen yeah. two oxygens three oxygens oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay so that comes first then comes cho yes, because sir. it is attached to two oxygens two oxygens then comes alcohol because it is attached to one oxygen okay yes yeah, sir so this is the first rank this is second rank this is third rank and this is fourth rank because fourth this is rank. not attached to any oxygen clear any oxygen yeah okay. okay what about this what did i give number one as fluorine correct why because this is attached to carbon this is attached to carbon this is also attached yeah, to yeah. carbon don't worry about group because it comes next what is first attached that is important okay carbon 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 and fluorine who will win fluorine fluorine it got first rank okay now 
because carbon 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 has clashed then go for the next so here this carbon is attached to bromine this carbon is attached to oxygen this carbon is not attached to anything except hydrogen so who will win bromine bromine so this will get second so second rank, rank. Uh, so this carbon is attached to oxygen this carbon is not attached to oxygen it is attached to hydrogen that's why it will get the third rank and it will get the fourth rank clear yes sir so this is how we give rankings for car involved prelog clear and we'll come back to this yes sir carbon because when we study optical isomerism it is a very big topic so there we will see r and s configuration we will see there but now we are studying geometrical isomerism let us come back to geometrical isomerism now here four different groups are attached so the problem is i cannot give cis and trans to this so what i'll give i'll give the priority this will get number 1 and this will get number 2 i'm talking about this carbon correct yes sir what about this carbon this will get number 1 nh21 nh2 yeah, will yeah, get sorry, sorry. Yeah? Okay. number 2 what about yeah. this 1 2 for this carbon nh22 yeah for this carbon 1 2 2 clear 2 no yes sir one is on same side one is on same side then that configuration is z isomer okay if one is on on the opposite yeah. side then it is called e okay okay so sir. these are actually some you know german uh, uh, origin the full form of this z and e i don't remember no need to summon you just you, you, you just uh, uh, remember that uh, z is on the same side and e is on the opposite side clear okay sir okay fine what yeah. about this what about this it is z it is z and it can yeah. also have cis and trans right yeah sir yeah it is cis and it is also cis it is also cis sir it will not have z then anyhow it has two same carbon so c z and e it is present always okay whenever you have oh, okay. geometrical isomerism you will definitely have z and e okay okay but you may have cis and trans or may not have cis and trans yes yeah, so i got it got it yeah so what about this e, e and it trans. is trans, trans. now can you guess something what uh, is cis always z and trans always e yeah is cis always e and trans always e yeah so cis will be z and trans will be e actually not true i'll show you this one can you see it is e because number one priority yeah, is this, number two is this here for this carbon for this carbon number one is this number yeah, two yeah. is this so one is on the opposite side it is e here number one and number two okay. for this carbon for this carbon number one and number two number one, one is and number same two side, same same so it is so e is e transcend e is transcend g is cis okay fine yeah what about what about this here it number is one is this Number one is this. Number two is this. Here, yeah, number one is this it. and number two is this. Correct. So it is Z. Yeah. It is Z, but because but same groups are on the opposite side, it is trans. Okay. Yeah. Here, this is number one and this is number two for this carbon. For this carbon, this, this is number, number one and this is hydrogen. number two. One is on the opposite side. That's why it is E. but because same groups are on the same side it is cis cis and e so z can be trans also e can be yes, cis sir, also yes sir yeah clear what about this yes yeah, sir yes yeah, what about this number 1 and number 2 number 1 and number 2 no two. cis trans so this is z z because on the same side okay clear yes what sir what about this? yeah number 1 and number 2 number 1 chlorine and number 2 fluorine 
number one and number two for this. One and one are on the opposite side. That's why it is E. Clear? And what about cis e. and trans? They yeah. don't exist. They don't exist. Cis and trans? They don't they have don't? same carbons. Sa same molecules. They don't have same they groups. Have. Same groups sorry, or same sorry, atoms. Yeah. Okay. Clear? So these cannot exhibit cis and trans. Yes, sir. But whenever you have geometrical yeah. isomerism, you will always have E and G. You will always have E and G. You yeah. may or may not have e cis and trans. Okay? And Z can be yeah, trans, so yeah. Z can be cis, E can be trans, E can be cis. Okay? All those things are written yeah. here. Yeah. Okay? Got it, sir. What about this? It is it trans. Does not, it does not exhibit geometrical isomerism. You know why? Yeah, sir. Same, same group, group on carbon. Same two groups, yeah. But this carbon, same two groups. So no yeah, yes, geometrical sir. Okay? Yes, sir. What about this? No. Why? Same groups. Clear? Yeah. They do know, sir. Yes, same sir. hydrogens, yeah. It doesn't matter. This, yeah. that is, this has different groups. If any carbon has same groups, then it doesn't exhibit geometric isomerism. Geometric yeah. isomerism. Yes, sir. What about this? Number one, number two. Number one, number two. So on same side, that's why E. And same groups are also on the same side. That's why it is cis. Clear? Yes, we are sir. On opposite side. That's why trans. Number one, number two. Yes, number sir. Number one, number two. So number one is e. on the opposite side. That's why it is E. Clear? Yes, sir. What about this? Trans and Z. Number one, number two. Number one, number two. So this is Z. And trans. And same groups are on opposite side. That's why it is trans. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What about this? Number one, number two. What about this? Cis and E. Number one, number so this is E. But same groups are on same side. That's why it is cis. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What about this? Number one, number two. Number one, number Z. two. No so cis and Z. trans. No cis and trans because no same groups are attached. Clear? Yeah, yeah. What about this? Number one, number two. Number one, number two. Number one, so number one is two. on opposite side. That's why it is? E. Yeah. E. Okay. Now, whenever you have, you know, one double bond, or three double bonds, or five double five. bonds, odd, odd, odd. Yeah, yeah. Consecutive three, double five, bonds. Seven, they show. They may show geometric isomerism. They may show. Okay. When they will show? When obviously two different groups are attached here. Two different groups are attached here. Clear? Yeah. Whenever you have even number of double bonds, even number of double bonds. Two, four, six. six. This will not show geometrical isomerism. The reason is this. I just told you that pi bonds are like this, right? Yeah. So if uh, pi bonds are like this in between these two carbons, on the neighboring carbon, the pi bonds will be like this. Okay. So this is top yeah. and bottom. This is top and bottom. In neighbor, neighboring, uh, you know, double bond will be at front and back. You know why? Inter-electronic repulsion, they will not be on the same plane. Clear? They will try to move farthest from each other. So if this is on top and bottom, this pi bond. This pi bond will be at the back and front. Because if both are on top and bottom, there will be repulsion no, between the two neighbors. Clear? Yes, yeah, sir. What about the other? It will be on top and bottom again. Why? Because uh, the neighboring is on front and back. Clear? Yes, sir. So when this happens, this will be in this plane. Because this should be planar, right? Trigonal planar. This is sp2 carbon. Okay? Yeah. And this is sp. Why? Because it is double bonded here, double bonded here. So forget about this. This is sp. This is sp2. SP carbon. So this, these two bonds will be yeah. in the... That means Again. these four bonds will be in the same plane. Clear? 
Yeah. If you have one double bond, three double bond, five double bonds, clear. Whereas if you have even number of double bonds, then what will happen? This will be at top and bottom. So this will be at top and bottom. Front and okay. back. This will be at front and back. So this carbon plane will also be like this. Okay. So this will be at front and back. Clear. Now, when yes, these two sir. bonds are at top and bottom, and these two are on front and back, this is in this plane. This is in this plane. Clear. So these cannot They're show. They are not trigonal planar. No, no, no. Which one? Which one? This is trigonal planar. This is trigonal planar. But this is in this plane. This is in this plane. You are understanding? Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. This is in this plane. This carbon, this bond, this bond, this bond, this bond. Whereas this is in this plane. This bond, this bond, and this bond. Why? Because of the electronic repulsion between these two. These, uh, you know, pi bonds are at top and bottom. These are at front and back. If these are at front and front back, and back yeah, so. Okay. That means we cannot have uh, cis and trans and z and e na here, even if different groups are yeah, attached. Yeah. So if you have even okay. number of conjugative double bonds, we cannot have geometrical isomerism. Clear? Yes, sir. Got it. Same thing for spiral compounds with uh, you know rings. So if you have uh, you know even number of even number of these things, what? Even number of Charges. rings, two rings, double bonds or rings, yeah, four rings, four rings. Okay, so these cannot exhibit geometric isomerism because one ring will be like this, another ring will be like this because this is uh, you know uh, which carbon, yeah. three carbon, right? Sp three means what? Tetrahedral, right? Tetrahedral means two will be in one plane, one will be at front and one will be at back. Clear? So this ring will be like this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Whereas here one will be at front and one will be at back. This will this is already at back and front. That's why. What will be? Here. They will be in one plane. Top and bottom. So that means yeah. this will be in this plane. These two will be in this plane. So they cannot exhibit what geometric isomerism. Clear? Are you understanding? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah, whenever you have exhibit. even even number of rings. Just like they cannot exhibit of, geometrical isomerism. They cannot exhibit geometrical isomerism. When you have odd number of rings, now they exhibit geometrical isomerism. Why? Because yes, look sir. at this. One will be like this. One will be like this. One will be like this. This and this will yes, lie sir. in the same plane. Yeah. Yeah. First and yeah. last will lie in same plane. Yes, yes, yes. That's why they can have cis and trans. When when these two groups are different and these two or two groups are different. They may show cis and trans, but they will definitely show Z and E. E and Z, yeah. Okay. E and Z, they will definitely show. If yes, the, these two groups are different and these two groups are different. Uh, and after this, if these two groups are same, then obviously there will be no geometrical isomerism. Clear? Yeah, yeah. But here it doesn't matter. Even if you have same groups or different groups, whatever you do, this will never show geometrical, geometrical isomerism. Geometrical isomerism. Clear? Because they are on different plane. Yes, yes. What about this combination of uh, double bond and rings? Okay. So if you have three, then they can odd show. number, na? they can show. Three, they can show. Clear? Yes. Sir. One, two, three, four, five. They can show. They can show. Clear? Whenever you have yes, even number. No, they cannot show. Three, four, one, two, three, four. They cannot show. So this will not show geometrical isomerism. This will not show geometrical isomerism. This will not show. Geometrical isomerism. Clear? The reason is again yes, same. Sir. Okay? Even numbers. Okay. Now, tomorrow I'll continue geometrical isomerism only, but a different uh, situation. Okay? So, we'll consider geometrical isomerism for cycloalkanes tomorrow. Okay? Okay, sir. So I'll share this. Just go through carefully, read carefully. Okay? Tomorrow I'll continue okay. with uh, geometrical isomerism for cycloalkanes. After that, we'll start one big topic, which is, you know, optical isomerism. Okay, uh, so sir. Uh, that optical isomerism is a big topic, a very important topic also. Okay. Okay, tomorrow we'll continue. Glasses. Okay, now.